Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose of Metalholic Magazine, Metal Nation Radio, and with us once again, our wonderful friend Margarita Monet of Edge of Paradise. How are you doing? How is everything in your world? I'm very good, and thanks again for having me. It's awesome. It's been a while, so yeah, we've been busy. You guys have, and belated birthday wishes. I know it was almost a month ago now, but I haven't talked to you since then, so... <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I know time go, time goes by really fast. It does. It does. Yeah. I just had mine last week, and I'm feeling old these days. But you guys have already hit number one on Amazon with your new EP, Alive. Congratulations. Thank you. We're very excited. So <laughs> I hope it's going to, you know, hope we keep it up. But it's definitely good news. And top 40 on iTunes. So far, so good. Yeah, you're making the big push to get on the Billboard 200 with your first week of sales, I see. Yes, we're pushing it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You got a little guitar giveaway going on there? Yeah, you know, it's it's always fun, and we're doing we're giving away post, signed postcards and other fun stuff because, you know, it's cool to be engaging with everyone, kind of build relationships, and then you meet people on the road a big community so we always like to do stuff like that when we can yeah, you guys really got out more last year than i think i've ever seen in terms of touring yeah mm-hmm. we've toured uh, 30 states so far so and we're, we're going to europe in september so hopefully you know we'll keep expanding <laughs> so well you and i have been friends for a number of years but for those who are new to edge of paradise this is maybe their first taste this alive ep Give us a little backstory on the band. So we formed around five years ago, and uh, Dave and I, Dave is a guitar player, we started the band, and uh, our first CD was Mask, and uh, that kind of, that was something that we put out to start building on, and then we recorded Immortal Waltz, and that was kind of like our debut album, because we wrote the songs together, and that really in a way started to define our sound and we worked with the legendary Michael Wagner who became our dear friend he's like part of the family now he produced the CD and after we just kept touring and now we have this new CD coming well that just came out alive and that one was produced by Chuck Johnson and Chuck is the guy behind Corn and Slipknot so he kind of helped us to develop, I guess, the heavier side of Edge of Paradise, bring out the heavier, more industrial side of the band. And uh, Michael Wagner mixed one of the songs, A Mystery, on this, and it's one of my favorites on this CD. And uh, we're just, uh, you know, we just keep it going. And uh, I, um, I think, like, if people listen to the evolution of the music, uh, they would <laughs> see the development of the band and uh, hopefully you know, like our sound and come to our shows because we want to meet everyone. (laughs) But yeah, that's kind of the story. Yeah, and there's definitely a bit more of an industrial edge to this this one for sure. And I was going to ask you if in your mind Alive is sort of an extension or a progression from Immortal Waltz. Uh, Definitely a progression because the the sound is a bit different now. And uh, I mean, you can still tell it's us, but uh, I'm, I think we've all grown as a band and as people, and I'm definitely developed as a vocalist as well, and I'm experimenting with different sounds, and also, like, on the keyboard, I, <laughs> I've been into, you know, kind of playing around with more industrial sounds, more, and uh, the, just the rhythmic, is, rhythmic part of the music is a bit more aggressive, a bit more... I, I would say it's kind of like a mesh of corn, uh, Ramstein, maybe some Evanescence. <laughs> That's what we've been hearing so far. So, but it's definitely a progress from Immortal Walls. Well, and you gave me a nice segue because my next question was, mm-hmm. be, I mean, you have one of the most distinctive voices I've ever heard in music, and it really shines on Alive. Did you go in? Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Did you go into this wanting to do anything new vocally to challenge yourself, or did it just sort of happen organically when you were in there? I, You know, I think it happened organically. I think it's just part of the process uh, as a band. You know, the more songs you write, I guess the better you are at using, or, you know, just, uh, yeah, maybe 
I didn't want to like showcase what I can do. I mean, that was never the goal. The goal was to make the best songs that we can. And I guess, you know, having the great vocals on it is the big part <laughs> of it. But I think also having Chuck Johnson produce this helped because he helped guide me in the right direction as a vocalist. And I think I just know myself better now as well. So that was that was one of the things as well. <laughs> but I'm very happy how it came out. So yeah. we're very proud of this one. I think this is your strongest effort so far. And now how did how did Chuck get involved in this? And then I believe you also had Jay Rustin involved in this somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Mike Plotnikoff. We we got like <laughs> super lucky working with the people um, we have. But Chuck, he lives out here, and uh, I think Dave uh, became. We have some mutual friends, and he became friends with him on Facebook, and we just started talking. And he was like, "I really like you guys," and you know, let's work together. So. Shade of Crazy was the first song we worked with him on together. And, you know, we clicked, and he is in the area, and he was awesome to work with, and he really knows his stuff, and he's really excited about the band, and it's always really great to work with someone like that. And we just continue to keep working together, and I think the more songs we recorded together, the better they got. So, you know, it's just a really good combination. And... Then we, Jay Rustin, he's also out here in LA and we also met him through a mutual friend and he, he mixed Alive and uh, A Shade of Crazy and my, Michael Wagner mixed Mystery and Mike Plotnikoff, who's also, <laughs> we're big fans of, he mixed Dust to Dust and Humanoid. And I think all of them have such distinctive sounds and, uh, um, they, you know, like they made each song like a, you know, to stand on its own because they put a stamp on it, and um, it just, you know, came out really great. We're really happy with it. Yeah, and and fortunately, because there are only five songs, I'm going to ask you about all of them. <laughs> but before we get to the to the music, tell us mm-hmm. a little bit about the artwork because it's a wonderful piece of artwork you've got for the album. Thank you. I love the artwork. Well, it was done by Timo Wars. He's a German artist, and we love Timo. He He's really amazing. He has so much uh, phenomenal art out there. So, you know, I think I sent him an idea and kind of the message behind the, behind the CD, and he sent us back, you know, some sketches. And I always love to see what other people interpret you know, how they interpret it, because I I didn't just want to tell him exactly what we wanted, because I like like to collaborate and (laughs) kind of get an um, idea from the other person, and he completely got it. So the idea behind it is that, you know, we're kind of trapped. Basically, you see like a cyborg or humanoid or whatever you want to call it, and a human trying to break through the shell of a machine. And that's kind of the message behind the CD, is that, you know, in the present day and age we're so tied up with technology and our way of life that sometimes we our humanity kind of takes a back seat and we want to send a message to encourage people (laughs) to break through the outer shell of a machine and you know each song kind of has a uh, you know explores different issues but that's kind of the whole tie-in and that's sort of what you get on that title track, which you also did a video for, and it has sort of that industrial feel we talked about. And it, it seemed to me when I was listening to it that it was speaking to that disconnect between people that we have these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, in a way it's true. And sometimes, I mean, I experience that too as well. You know, when you're kind of in this rat race, <laughs> uh, especially living in L.A., sometimes you just become numb to what's happening around you. And, uh, you know, I think we have to, as people, we're very lucky to be alive on this planet because uh, it's a giant universe and (laughs) we could have been, you know, a leaf on a tree or something, but we're here. And uh, um, I think it's important to sometimes take a moment in your day and just acknowledge what's happening around you to feel alive because it's easy to forget when you're caught up 
you know, in technology and just chasing, chasing time. It is, and it's funny because right before I called you, I was reading an article about gratitude and the power of gratitude, and it seems mm. to me, you know, I, I was sitting in a restaurant last night, and at every table around me, everyone in the family was talking on their cell phone or playing on their cell phone, and they're out together, but yeah. not together, and that's sort of how we've become as a society, and we've become so used to so many things technology, getting what we want as quickly, all these things that we've forgotten to have that gratitude for just the everyday experience of the people we know and the things that we do have, you know, the joy of being able to listen to music and, and f find all these wonderful things in people and the connection that we do have, but yet we're so disconnected. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, um, a bit scary sometimes because I meet, you know, especially the younger generation when they grew up, because I kind of miss, like, when I was in school, we didn't really have cell phones. Everyone didn't have a cell phone, so we still connected as kids. And now, younger generation, you know, they communicate through the phones in virtual reality, basically. And you, when you talk to them, you kind of see that uh, disconnect a little bit when you have, like, person-to-person -person interaction, you know? It's, it's, you can see a shift. And I hope... You know, as we go along as a, you know, human race, <laughs> I just hope that we don't lose the humanity, you know, the connection between people, because I think that's what keeps us going. It's, you know, we're all here to learn and um, inspire each other. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, now the first, you mentioned it already, the first song you guys did with Chuck, the first song that you released as a single, you made a wonderful video for it, Shade of Crazy, which is perhaps my favorite Edge of Paradise song to date. Tell us about that track. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So that track is basically about, I mean, I'm sure all of us have that one person that we love, but they can drive you crazy. And, uh, um, you know, that's kind of... Um, exploring the relation, that relationship and also uh, I'm trying to say that it's important to, to find a balance in the shade of crazy because I mean everyone is a bit crazy and it's good because that's what makes this world so colorful and interesting that everyone is so different but um yeah, and that song was, you know, it's a it's a really fun song and it's fun to play live and we just wanted to, in the video too, we wanted to make as colorful as we possibly can and yeah, I think that was the first song that kind of started this newer sound of the band as well. And there's a lot of new elements that I hadn't really picked up on with you guys before with this one. Dust to Dust has sort of a haunting vibe to it. What's that one about? Dust to dust. So that one is saying that there's more to life than our physical existence. And even though we come from dust and we turn into dust, there's more to us than that. And that the human mind is so powerful that we can be fearless and we can be limitless if we kind of tune into that. And the chorus starts with caught in the miracle, we're not just physical. And that just kind of expands on this idea that we are alive in this universe, in our human form. And uh, um, we are caught in the miracle, basically. So that I really love that song. And um, I love how the music kind of conveys that as well. It's haunting, but it's also hopeful in a, in a way and uh, you know the industrial element of it is the I guess the machine <laughs> side of our society now and how it's important to remember that we all have a heart and a soul <laughs> I mean if you believe in that and you know I, I've always believed in that stuff and I always like to read about people you know when they experience like out-of-body experiences and I also listened to this interview that this neuroscientist was talking about how, you know, his whole life he dedicated to studying the human brain, and uh, he's like, the more I discovered and, you know, learned about it, the more uh, mysterious it sounded. So I went from believing into nothing to believing in everything because anything is possible and there has to be some other explanation than what we have right now. So, yeah. That's kind of exploring that. And then you, you mentioned this one earlier, the one that Michael Wagner produced, uh, 
you always love getting behind that piano and you you've got mystery on here which opens with that beautiful piano your breathy vocals there's a lot of emotion at play there tell us about that one yeah i think mystery is one of my favorite songs on this cd and uh, um that one uh, I guess it's uh, it, it opens with um, I call on the maker, our creator. I stand here before you, in this beautiful tragedy. <laughs> but it's not really a religious song because I'm not really a religious person, but I am spiritual. So I I guess this song is a way to you know if someone is going through a difficult time, and it's a way to cope with the painful times that people go through, because to remind everyone that this is a mystery. And uh, there's so many things we don't know and why we don't know why certain things happen and why, you know, certain things don't happen. And, you know, if you're going through a really painful time to remind yourself that this is, you know, it's a mystery and just to, we have to accept that in a way. And uh, I think when you do, it kind of serves as a hope in a way. So this song, you know, it's a bit dark, but it's also hopeful. So yeah, that's the idea behind that one. And of course, that brings us to the one we haven't talked about yet, Humanoid, which has, as you Mm -hmm. mentioned it earlier, when I listened to it, I heard sort of Ramstein or Ministry for some reason, with maybe a touch of that Evanescence-like sound because of your voice and your Mm -hmm. style. What's the story on that one? Um, that one kind of ties it all together, <laughs> the message. It's a bit cynical. That one, uh, the hook is submit, get your silicone mind, because in the picture you look richer, you'll be one of a kind. And that one kind of explores, you know, our way, you know, when people chase monetary gain and how we live in a society led by Uh, big corporations and people trying to get ahead and just focusing on the uh, you know materialistic things like I believe that it's not the most money you have or you know the best looking you are or whatever it may be it's not what makes you one of a kind I believe that it's your mind it's your spirit that's what makes you one of a kind so that's kind of like a cynical way of (laughs) uh, you know of basically exploring that issue and yeah just saying don't become a humanoid (laughs) and it's a really fun song it's i think the fastest the heaviest one we have Um, and i can't wait to do it live i think that one's going to be a lot of fun well that brings us around to our final question which is talking about getting out there live like we said you played a lot of shows last year in places you haven't been before you're going to europe this year what are we looking at in terms of some u.s dates this year when are you guys looking to get on the road uh, well, in April, we have shows coming up in North and South Carolina, and in July, we're going to be touring the West Coast, but we're booking shows right now, so I can tell you that we'll be announcing more U.S. dates this summer, and uh, in Europe, like right now, we have a festival confirmed. It's the metal fe- female metal event in Eindhoven, Netherlands, but we're also booking shows around that in Germany and Belgium and hopefully more areas. So, you know, a lot of a lot depends on um, this CD right now. We're kind of in the promoting stage and uh, hopefully we'll keep this um, moving up on the charts that will enable us to tour even more. But, you know, the goal this year is to tour as much as we possibly can. So keep posted on that on our Facebook page or our website at justparadiseband.com. Um, and, we, you know, we hope to see everyone on the road. All right. Sounds wonderful. Margarita, thanks for taking some time to chat about the new EP Alive. Just came out on Friday. I'm hoping you guys break big into that uh, Billboard 200 with this because it's a fantastic piece of work that you've put together here. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me. And uh, I'm really looking forward to finally meet you, meeting you in person, <laughs> hopefully happen. this summer. It will happen one of these days. All right, I'll let you get out of here. We'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye.